Yes, welcome along to episode 20 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365, the season finale with David Jennings and Johnny Deneen looking back at the 2023 Cheltenham Festival. Now, Johnny, I, I was a bit nervous coming in here today, I have to say, right? I was a bit embarrassed walking down the streets of Dublin. I almost wish we still wore masks. <laughs> I wish we were back in 2020 and you could wear a mask and all you could see was my eyes because for fear of meeting somebody I'd know, I was embarrassed for myself, I was embarrassed for my family, I was embarrassed for the race and post, I was embarrassed to be associated with Up in the Ante. I'd just like to apologise to everybody for my horror show at the 2023 Chatham Festival. It was unintended and hopefully it won't happen again. I'm beginning to doubt my profession, Johnny. Ah, not at all. Sure, listen, the, the, you mean the picking horses, like, I, I think everyone watching the show will know that, and it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, like, I'm... Um, well, we're, we're making it not look easy. Oh, well, I know. But you look, <laughs> if, if we have to do the walk of shame, what difference does it make anyway? Look, with, with tw 20 horses each, you'd know when I'd won. I'm, like, I'm literally a neck behind you anyway. Sure, if, if, if Cora Grambler didn't fluke the ultimate, we'd be, we'd, we'd be duck eggs. And... Uh, Look, See, I, I was playing for the nil all draw, Johnny. I was yeah. and then you got the early goal. Yeah, that's I just, it. I, I, I didn't put, know what to do then. I, I started to put men, men behind the ball then. <laughs> You wouldn't let me attack at no, all. Exactly, no, exactly, no. I didn't yeah. even get it into the box. I was playing with a false number nine and all that kind of stuff, yeah. So, look, uh, I mean, I could have another neck and I could have got stumped on. But just the way it goes, I could easily have no winner. Do you know what I mean? I, I could easily have... Absolutely. Like it's, it's, like, it's a bit of a... Like, to be fair, I think most people watching know that, like, trying to pick winners for Cheltenham in November and December is... There's a touch of the poison chalice about it, to be fair, there isn't is, there? Like, I yeah. mean, like, I was even thinking, if, if you did pick a horse... Before the, I think it was the twentieth of December. You, you couldn't for the Ballymore. You couldn't have landed on the Imperial Pass because you know, mm. no one, no, no one knew he existed. Bar the stable, like I mean. So look, like if, if you put up horse, like I mean, if you put up Sir de Burley for the stairs, like the white coats have been become. Oh yeah, you wouldn't be allowed back. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You'd be taking away a, 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 a screaming by yeah. the legs and the hands going out yeah. the door. Do you know what I mean? So so look, it isn't easy. It isn't easy. No, you we had a few. Well, not my, I wasn't unlucky or anything like that, no. But yeah. like I, I did warn you a few weeks ago that we were in big bother. You did. You, you yeah, constantly yeah. told me it could be nil all. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did. So I, I was trying to prepare you for this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I was quite prepared. I had to laugh. There was people on Twitter, you know, giving giving me abuse. And Aoife, my wife, was looking at it and she was disgusted. You know, I said, Aoife, they're dead right. I deserve every bit of abuse I'm getting. It was scandalous performance and I'd like to apologise. But look, there's plenty to dissect at a glorious 2023 Cheltenham Festival. It was fantastic. And we're going to look back at it all in the rest of the show. So as always here on Up in the Ante, we kick off with our questions from the crowd. And the first one this week comes in from Arthur Kelly. And he wants to know, how did Johnny fare out last week at Cheltenham? What was your best result financially and your worst? So kick it off. Overall, Johnny, were you up or down? Overall, there was very little in it. I, I, I started well, then went behind. One Wednesday, went in front. Then Thursday, I actually won Thursday. Would you believe that? That's an unbelievable achievement. Yeah. Um, how did you win Thursday? I tell you what I did now. I backed the first favourite, Mighty Potter. I had a good bet in that. Yeah. A good few quid in that. He didn't win. No, I know that, yeah. Um, second race, I'd know a bit. Uh, the Ryanair. Th the third race. Shishkin. A, 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 a very small lay of it, very, very small, and had it on um, two losers. So I didn't that break even. But it, it came to the. The stairs yeah, hurdle. No, I had a tiny. I had a bet on it home by the Lee anti post going into it. Ran a cracker, in fairness. It did it run well, yeah, it did. Uh, but the French horse that they backed. Oh my God, gold tweet. Yeah, you could lay that at nine to two and five to one. I actually laid it at twelve to one the night before in bed. You mean I'm tipping <laughs> away? So I said this will be twenty five to one. This is I'll, I'll, I'll get me a few quid here. So next thing, fellow rings me in the morning on the way to the race. He says, "What's so money for that French horse?" I said, "What price is it? Seven to one. It's just unbelievable." Next thing, you could lay it at six to one. So I had a, a lash off it at six. Had a lash off it at five. And then it went to 92. I said, look, I'm going to go for the juggler here. If this wins, I have the clue anyway. Do you know what I mean? So I said, I'll have a go after 92. You were adamant at every preview night on Open the Ante, everything you said, you said there is no way whatsoever Gold Tweet can win. And the market said differently. Why yeah. were you so against it? Oh, look, it just, it, I didn't. Look, I'm saying that, like, if it, if it beat Dashiell Drasher by as much as it did the previous meeting to the one. Yeah, no, <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? So you, even though I got, a, got the money, you, you mightn't even have been right. You know, who knows? But uh, I don't think I've seen a more bizarre ride in was, my life was, at Cheltenham. Uh, however, it was Johnny Sharon, is it? Yeah. I was very happy with Johnny Sharon. Yeah, but did you ring Johnny Sharon the night before, no? I couldn't have ridden it any better myself. <laughs> 
I was looking at him coming down here and says, stay where you are now. <laughs> and he did. And don't move. He, lo- <laughs> he, looked like, he looked like me at the end of a gym session. He yeah. was knackered. He didn't move. Did he not? No. 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 I was looking at him coming down here. Is he going well or what's I going know. on here? Do you know what I mean? I said to myself, but I said, he's a nice bit behind at the same time, you know. 25 lengths behind on the bridle. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. yeah, so I said, oh, just stay where you are. You're very, I'm very, very happy with you. So he was my pal anyway coming out of Cheltenham. Johnny You Chirag. and Johnny. Oh, I was very happy with him. He could so be standing I, beside I, you next I year. Johnny Sharon and yeah, Johnny Deneen. I got my money back in one go there. Right. And once started the Berlin one, I said, no, this is not a place to be betting at all today. Because I always found out making a book, there was always a result, oh, there was always a day of results where you couldn't back a winner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was invariably the Thursday. It was invariably. So I you did, just took a pull then? I took a pull then, yeah. I, I stood Lucia. I laid at Lucia. And, she uh, was disappointed. She was, she? yeah, she was. I think there was a niggle about Lucia coming to the meeting mm. too. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You don't get to hear about these niggles, do you? Like really, no. uh, from the trainers. As far as I can see, you don't anyway. And um, what else did I do? I didn't back Stumptown actually. I didn't. Right, okay. I didn't bother. It, lo- it looked like a day that God wouldn't couldn't back a winner anyway. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And and uh, on Friday I lost again. So I'd say I finished up getting out, breaking even kind of. So gold tweet had a lot to do with your. Oh, gold tweet one had been had been taken away. Yeah, had yeah. been taken away. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what was your best result financially? My best then? result financially was uh, Enelgamine on the on the Wednesday. I, yeah. I, I, well done. I, I backed that at the night before at fifteen to eight. So I just said to myself, it can't be bigger than this. You know what I mean? That kind of way. And uh, your worst result. The worst result was financially was honeysuckle. Honeysuckle, mm. yeah. Um, now saying that, I had a little buffer going into the race because I was after doing things right. So it wasn't a, it wasn't like you had a real bad race on top of having a bad day. I was actually having a good day. You're having a great day. Yeah, but I was. Well, st- I, I was text you after Cora Trambler. Yeah. So you were after going lay in Facile Vega, back in El Fabiolo, and back in Cora Trambler. Yeah, yeah. So I sent you a text. I said, Johnny, you're having a great day, and Johnny replied and he says, Yeah, yeah, do, doing well, doing well. And you thought at that stage you had an unassailable lead on day one. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't actually. I finished up losing. And then I text him after last race. How did, you, how did you do, Johnny? Ended up losing. <laughs> <laughs> the unassailable lead was yeah, caught. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was caught. Um, I laid honeysuckle. Bad, bad race there, though. Bad race. Financially, bad race. But it was. It was. Yeah, so tell me now, right? We had this conversation earlier on in the series. I said, how would you feel if honeysuckle won? You know, would you get emotional? Did you get emotional? No, listen. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, uh, when the once the money is gone, I mean, uh, uh, I, I was actually. Like the same as most people, delighted for Henry de Brom and, and 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 not so much the race horse. The horse is only horse, but <laughs> delighted for. Uh, that's what Do Mr. they know? Mr. Do you think Ray. they know? No, I, I, she probably does. But but look at what happened, Henry de Brom. There, everyone every knows in the start of the year, like terrible stuff, like unimaginable tragedy. Anyway, and you, how could you begrudge that man a winner? Anyway, that's do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like like Henry de Brom comes. I don't actually know the man. It comes across as a very nice fella, and mm. even. To me, when he stood up in the church that day, and, and how he was able to talk, incredible, in, yeah. absolutely, like uh, like you, you couldn't have but an admiration for him. And once my money is gone, like I'm delighted for it that day one day. It, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't the, the world's worst result for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, even though I lost my money, so like there's more to life than money too. Even though like. The, like I like the money now I do <laughs> <laughs> I do I must admit I like it I like it but uh, but look there is other things involved and, and like w- w- when when those kind of things happen and you, how could you like as I say how how, how could you be I know I didn't go down I was, I was did in, you not go down Johnny? no I didn't I was in a place you must have been on your own then I ah, know there was a few I, I, was, I was able to watch it on the screen but look I was kind of too lazy to go down because I was up about 100 <laughs> steps and, <laughs> and if, I were good, if I were down I'd have to go back shame up shame on you oh, know, Johnny Deneen I was a, in the middle of it I have never experienced Experience anything like it in my life. It was my greatest day on a race course. It was just, it was constant. So Constitution Hill obviously got a massive reception. Yeah. And what a performance that was, okay? But to actually, for, for the duration of that spell of 15 minutes, it was just, as I said in a piece that I wrote, it was like everybody just wrapped their arms around the Brom heads and just gave them a massive hug. It was just glorious. And it continued. There was cheers, there was three cheers, there was 10 cheers, there was 20 cheers. It was just it was just magic. And I said to myself, even Johnny Deneen <laughs> could appreciate this. No, I did, I, honestly, honestly. I mean, I, like, as, aside from the money, which is irrelevant, it, it, was, it was a fantastic win, is right. Yeah, and like it, Tuesday was, was one of the best days I was ever racing myself, actually. It, was, it really was good. So breaking news, Johnny Deneen has a heart. <laughs> <laughs> Our second question this week comes in from Anita Mulgrew, and Anita wants to know what was the stupidest bet Johnny had at Cheltenham last week? The one bet he instantly regretted and will regret for weeks to come. So your stupidest bet at Cheltenham last week. Was it was is this oh, a close call? No, it was an absolute no brainer. I was <laughs> absolutely demented after it, I swear to God. Now I don't normally 
normally get upset about backing losers because I back a lot of losers, you know what I mean? But um, I, f I backed Blood Destiny in the Triumph Hurdle and, and I, I was at home actually for that because I, I was home for the, for, for the Friday and uh, oh, I was talking to myself. I was in the room on my own but I was talking to myself now. I should never... Why? I, look, first of all, it was stable neglected, which I don't like. Yeah, this was, this was the thing I couldn't believe. One of your punting perils is yeah. never ever back a stable yeah. second string of jockey bookings because even if you're wrong, You'll be right most of the time. Yeah, it was stable, and neglected. It, it, it was it was amateur ridden, like in in a race where you like against like the likes of Paul Tony. There's a big disparity between the jockeys. I, mean, I think everyone will admit that. Um, it 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 had no form to back up the hype. Do you know what I mean? I backed it at a bad price as well. On top of that, I, I backed it at about two to one or nine to four. It was of three to one. It was not bigger. Seven to two at the Did finish. It? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. It wasn't even second favourite at the finish on, wow. on, on, the, on the on the on the exchanges. And another thing as well, which I hate. It had never had been contested in a, in a lead in the race, and and you've if you ever spot the those, there was a few of them this week anyway. The minute a horse like like they're like greyhounds, if they can get a soft lead, don't know what they like most of them. And, and Blood Destiny, okay. uh, Blood Destiny had made, got two races: one in Mallow where he got a soft lead, and one in Fairy House where he got completely uncontested lead. I knew he wasn't going to get a soft lead here with Gary Moore's horse. And like even watching it early on, it says this has no chance. You know what I mean? I just knew it has no. And on top of that, it was either Blood Destiny or Lassie mode for me, and I picked the wrong one. Like if something else had won, I wouldn't have minded because I'd back the loser mm. anyway. But if I if I had gone right, I would have hit the winner. That was another mm. thing as well. So I, I was sick. I backed it now, absolutely sick. But you look, that's it. You know what I mean? But you, you live and learn. But like I, I, I know, as I said, I normally if I back losers, it don't bother me now. But that was one instance where I was. Like I was, I was like regretting it, and, and yeah. I knew you're and still it, not over it. But looks, you things. could smell it before the race where you weren't going yeah. to be winning either. Do you know what I mean? No, that was hard to drift it over there and won too. I wouldn't really mind it. I don't really mind the drifts at, at a place like Cheltenham because there is robots and things driving driving computers, mm. and they're not. They're betting to. I don't know what they're betting to. To be honest, there was one horse anyway. I I was up in the stand one day. Classical dream came down. Came down the. Um, the slipway to go out oh into the race God, course. Yeah. He started kicking rails. He was yeah. covered in sweat, right? Yeah, unmanageable. Yeah, yeah, unmanageable. He put his head down the ground and he went off a thousand mile an hour, right? Yeah. I laid him a ten to one. In five minutes' time, he was seven to one. So, so there's, there's computers back in these horses. They can't even, even watch. They can't the even see this stuff because yeah. they're, they're programmed in to do whatever. So I wouldn't really mind about the drifts and the drifts because, like, Imperia Pass was a big drifter, Massive and he won. Blood Destiny. Like you always hear about the drifters after you say, "Oh, Blood Destiny, big drifter," but no one said after the race. Perry passed some drifter, wasn't he? Like, and he drift. was. And his exchange price was far greater than his SP. He was like, he was bigger than seven to two at the finish, yeah. And his return yeah. five to two, which is a scandalous return. But um, you, you always hear like you have the conspiracy theorists after it's all oh, big drifter, big drifter. Mm. But in a place like Cheltenham, like who who was back in gold tweet? Do you know what I mean? Who was back in bad? That horse in the Fred Winter. Who God's name are back in them horses? Like bad was about five to one from I don't know what price it was. Mm. His first run in France, or out of France. Didn't, wasn't even guaranteed to stay or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? I didn't either, probably. And like that was going to be a fair effort from Ben Pauling now to win that race. But, like, like with a horse that had no far. I don't know. I, look, you couldn't figure out the markets in the latter races. Mm. Over there, I, I thought anyway. But uh, no, I was sick over Blood Destiny. Blood so. Destiny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, he'll get over it by the time we're back <laughs> in November. And our final question this week, and the final one in this series of Up in the Ante, comes from Pat Kelly. And Pat wants to know, what is the biggest lesson David and Johnny learned from the 2023 Cheltenham Festival? I'll go first here, okay? Sure, yeah. So obviously I had a horror show, right? Horror show, absolute <laughs> catastrophe, okay? And the one lesson I would have learned this year especially, and last year a little bit, is that you form an opinion on horses. Because of this show, you have an opinion on horses for months in advance, okay? So just say horses, even like, just say Ashdale Bob and the Stairs Hurdle for argument's sake, okay? So I put up Ashdale Bob at a big price, initially thinking at Christmas, finish second at home by the Lee, could be a week stairs hurdle. And then come the day, should the horse have no chance. Do you know what I mean? It was a real at the yeah. time it was a real strong stairs hurdle in the end, even though Sire de Berlay won it. If you form an opinion on a horse in November, December, January, February, it's okay to change it the day of the race. So we do previews and you almost feel like you almost feel guilty if you change your mind. If, you, if you've tipped up a horse at a preview night or you've tipped it up and up in the ante, you almost feel guilty if you change your mind and say, oh, well, actually, this, like, Hermes Allen and Imperial Pass is a perfect example. I was all over Hermes Allen in the lead up to the Cheltenham Festival. And then all the preview night talk about Imperial Pass from the right people, like it was the right people. I sat beside David Casey, as did you. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
that, that was the one horse they thought, if we have a superstar, if we have a Duvan, a Vautour, it was going to be in Perry Pass. And yet come the day, I said, do you know what? No, I'm sticking to my guns, Hermes Allen. I, I was blown away by him in the cello. But my big thing would be, don't be afraid to change your mind. Even, open the interviewers, if you're watching a race and watching a horse and looking forward to him at the Cheltenham Festival, come the day, don't be afraid to change your mind because the race has completely changed complexion the day of the race or yeah, very close yeah. to the race. Yeah. So that would be the one lesson I learned, not to be so loyal to horses I've tipped up in previous weeks leading up to the festival. What would yours be? Well, two things anyway that I take away, like, uh, like we take it away anyway, with trainers, massive. Like the, the, the trainers, even some of the jockeys, like a lot of the same jockeys won the races, but the trainers that can prove, that they, can, they, can, they can do the business mm. are, are like the ones not, not to be writing away or writing off or whatever. Like the likes of Paul Nichols that can go back with two winners. Do you know what I mean? From you just said, well, I just said, <laughs> whatever what you just said. <laughs> I, I look, and he I, is what he's definitely yeah. watching. Uh, this no, week. to be fair, it, like he, he pulled two winners out of it, which was a big achievement with, with what he had going there. In my eyes, no, you know what I mean. Um, and fellas, we said, oh, the jockey won. It. Oh, the jockey was helpful, but the jockey didn't win in stage star at the same time. I think that won in merit, to be honest. Mm. Um, stay away, Fab. I think. Cobden helped in that one, all right. Mm. But his horses were knocking on the door all week. Brave man's game ran a cracker. Yeah, I did. Ran a blinder. And, and he had other horses that were placed in that. So he didn't have a big squad and he didn't have a strong squad, but he still had managed to pull two winners. Um, the likes of like Mullins, the usual suspects anyway, uh, Mullins, Elliot, De Bromley, they all had winners. You know what I mean? The, the, the smaller fella is struggling there, isn't he? Like the, the, mm. the smaller, like the, the Wells had winners there. The, the likes of, um, I suppose Martin Braslin was unlucky that he didn't Very have Very unlucky. Yeah, he didn't have winners though. No. Uh, like Charles Burns didn't have a great like his horses got injured and everything, you know what mm. I mean? And they, they weren't right and like he he missed like Grozny and uh, the horse in the per Timps shoot, shoot first, first they didn't yeah. make it and Blazing Cal came under a cloud. So and the ground went against Run for Oscar. So mm. you, you you know, he, he I suppose he'd be disappointed with his um yeah. but even like so Tony Martin who can train had a winner there, do you yeah. know what I mean? Fellas yeah. that that's are kind of under the radar. Proven performers. Yeah, yeah. No, they can win races there. They're, they're dangerous. But the one thing I always think about about this meeting anyway is if you have a horse like coming to this meeting that's, that's got soft leads and if they're not guaranteed to get a soft lead and, and you're virtually not guaranteed to get a soft lead in any race here, they have no chance. The likes of Hermes Allen. High definition? Yeah, high definition, probably another one. The mm. ground went against high definition too anyway. Mm. They had no chance on, on soft ground anyway. Mm. Uh, but he didn't get a soft lead. He wasn't able to get away from them no. anyway. Uh, Hermie Allen, editor of the Geese is another one where your man pestered him mm. this time. Like didn't didn't let him. You away. did call that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew he wouldn't get him. He wouldn't give him the same rope. Mm. And there was another one. Oh, Blood Destiny was a classic mm. example of it. Like was twenty clear in Fairy House. Wasn't even in the in, even in in the lead in in in, in uh, this place. So look, I think that the uh, trainers they they came to the fore. The top ones came to the fore. But the fact that. Another uh, the big thing I think is a lot of, in a lot of these big bigger meetings is if 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 horses have form with soft leads if they're not going to get them they like the greyhounds they don't perform. Okay, there you go. Those are the lessons learned at the twenty twenty three Cheltenham Festival. I like to apologise again. I'm sorry for my selections at the <laughs> festival. It's performance of the week time here on Up in the Ante where Johnny Deneen counts down his top three performances at the Cheltenham Festival. So there's 28 to choose from. I presume you haven't gone to Taunton or no. Market Raisin or Ratton in the last week. <laughs> so uh, three to choose from from the 28. I presume this was was a tough to, oh, it to was. dissect them. Oh, yeah. it was, of course. I mean, with the, the amount of t top quality performances. I'll have to leave out a few because, you know, okay. because we've only got the three. Okay, number and three is? Number three for me was Gallop in the Champ oh. in, in, in the Gold Cup. No, other people would have him number one. Like, mm. But I, I just, had, just had to fit him in somewhere at the same time. Now, Johnny, I'm sorry about this, but... You got him wrong. Yeah, I did. But sure, I did in about 15 other races. <laughs> More, maybe 20 of them. <laughs> but look, uh, what surprised you about Gallop in the Champs? Well, I didn't fancy him in running now. I thought I was in business. Like I didn't lay him for too much now because okay. I, I had a few quid on um, Statler who ran Diabolical and, and Noble. Yeah, he ran some races. He ran a blind, but, but he was the first horse beat at the same time. Well, Statler was number one and then he was number two. They weren't able to go to Gallup. They were, like, you were, they were operating at a different level, weren't they, them mm. horses? They're, they're like strong, strong stairs. They're, they're, they're four mile horses against top quality three mile horses. Mm. But uh, even he was a nice bit back and, and, and he didn't really jump with the same alacrity no. as he did other times. Even getting into the race, he was banging fences and everything. Now, the first time I thought he'd definitely win was when he turned in, it was over. Yeah. Didn't I mean, like he kind of swung back on the bridle and they were hopping off each other on the inside. He's going to get a solo down the outside. And um, The winning distance was remarkable because they obviously jumped the last together and he was probably two lengths up, 200 yards on the line. To win by seven 
That yeah. was some achievement. Well, I think that's pr- probably helped by the fact that Braveman's game didn't really, really see out the distance either. Do you know what I mean? Really? Like, I conflated was closing him down hand over fist going to the line for a second. But he, he had gone with Gallup and Oh, I know that, yeah. No, he was yeah. c- clearly the second best horse in the race. But he, he didn't... How do you define not staying, though? Like, he didn't stay, obviously, as well as Gallup and the Shams, but he stayed better than the rest to finish second. Yes, yeah, of course, yeah. But if You don't think he fully saw it out, though? No, I don't, no. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, I think if conflated had a got a run at him, he, he was knocked down, like, b- 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 around the time that Hewick fell around that part of the race. Okay. I think he might even have beaten Brave Men's game, to be honest. Okay. But but like saying that Brave Men's game is a clear second. He was he just talent wise is the second best horse in the race, without a doubt. But uh like, would he ever win a gold cup? I'd say it's doubtful now, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Even if Gallup in the Shaman wasn't in it, mm. I'd say there'd be half of something that might just worry him out of it. I ran a blind in race now and like the King George's them kind of races are his like for the taking, yeah, aren't they? Like once absolutely. once once Gallup in the Shams doesn't turn up. So number three in performance of the week is your gold cup winner, Gallup in the Shams. Number two. Number two for me was Honeysuckle. Wow. Yeah, I thought that put up a, a fierce effort. Really? Um travelled well. Like if you lay that, you were always you were always sticky, mm. you know what I mean? So you were happy enough maybe straight after the last hurdle well, maybe? Well I was down at the last and they came to and she was going to win, in my eyes she was going to win. And next thing, whatever kind of a mistake she made, she lost all momentum and everything. Yeah. I said, I'm in business here, I'm going to get away with this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the next thing she kind of finished like, it was a bit like Dawn Run, wasn't it? Like, you know what I mean? she's, she's, <laughs> the mayor is yeah, beginning to get up. Yeah, she's made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, but, but if she jumped the last, probably she'd have won six or seven lengths at the same time. Yeah. So like, but she travelled well, she was always in control of the race. But saying that, in that race, there was only three horses ridden to any effect in that God, race. There were some bad rides in that race. Brutal. Man. Like, the, the winner, the second, and Marie's Rock. Marie's Rock was given every chance in that race. It ran diabolical, didn't Marie's Rock? Now, uh, like, how they thought Brandy Lowe yeah. could win with a ride like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I thought... She's not a quicker. She's, yeah, she's she a was, galloper. They were all too far back, all the other horses. Brandy Love and, and uh, Epitante was miles. No, they ran bad after, ultimately they mm. ran bad. And they wouldn't have gotten within the last roar of that thing anyway. Mm. But but look, a, a, a honeysuckle to me was like, that was, that was as good a performance as I'd say she almost ever put up in Chen. Oh, really? But, but oh, I, I disagree just, with you there. Do you think so, yeah? Oh, yeah, no, I disagree with you there. I think, I would say she only probably had to be as good as she was in the Hatton's Grace to win it. That would be my opinion. Yeah, I think, uh, just her finish, her finish was, yeah. was, was dynamite. But there went no pace though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you like one slowly run race. She quickened up. She was very impressive. I don't think the honeysuckle last Tuesday was as good as either champion hurdle. Do you? You do. I do because I'm I, I, at the that. champion hurdle it beat Epitante by a lint and a half. It beat it by fifty lengths the other day. Ah, but yeah. I don't think that was Epitante. Ma- maybe not. Yeah, but like what? what, what I don't know. Look, um, I thought like uh, the boost that she put in. Like you'd say on the running, you'd say she'd get up and she might win a half a lint. Yeah. She's just bolted in like, yeah, like you know what I mean? yeah. And like Love Envoy does stay strong. Mm. So it, 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 it's, it wasn't as if that thing was dying or anything like that. It, uh, to me, I, I thought it finished the race really, really strongly. Really, really okay, strongly. Too strong go. for I'm me su- anyway. I'm surpri- yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am surprised. That, that was, I, didn't think, I didn't think Honeysuckle would make your top three. I thought emotionally, yes, number one. I thought, no, I didn't think, I didn't think she'd make your top three. So I am surprised. And there could obviously only be number one. So there's a lot of there's a lot of horses being left out here. Your number one performance well, it's, was. It's a bit like the, the twelve points in the Eurovision, isn't it? You know, the fellas are waiting. For, it's going to be this. It's going to be that. And next, there's only one. I'm giving a ten pair a pass. What? Yeah. So Constitution Hill isn't in your top three performances. Uh, you're, you're expecting Constitution Hill to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? I just think that uh, this horse is after like is is after like arriving. You know what I mean? As a top top horse. But if you are talking about this segment is performance of the week, surely the best performance at the Chapman Festival was Constitution Hill, no? But it, it was nothing out of the ordinary for Constitution Hill. That's what I'm saying. You know but he's mean? won a champion heart on the bridle by nine lands, pulling up. Yeah, but he didn't. It was be- extraordinary. He didn't beat anything, though. He same. beat Stateman, who you said would win the champion heart nine years well, out of ten. Well, he would have had, but apparently Stateman didn't. Didn't. Well, I, I was talking to him. I was, I was talking to someone that should know, and they, they thought Stateman slightly underperformed. Okay. It wasn't as good as normal, anyway. Okay. But look, okay, I didn't put in Constitution Hill because. So are we betting without constitution? Well, kind, kind of, of. yeah, yeah. Right. Like, oh, like it, 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 obviously he's a very a brilliant, brilliant horse. He's probably the best horse to run at the meeting. But it's nothing that he's not going to do every day. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Whereas Imperial Pass kind of announced himself as being okay. a top horse. Like, but just for clarity, my performance of the week by a country mile was constitutional. Okay. I have never, in all my time being in Cheltenham, 20 years or so now, standing in the grandstand halfway up the run, and I wasn't too far away from Nicky Henderson at the time, 
I have never in all my life seen a horse come up the run in like that. As in, still quickening while the jockey wasn't even asking him to quicken. Right. I thought it was extraordinary. My performance of the week was Constitution Hill. But you're the star player on this team and you are <laughs> in Perry Pass. I'm going to go with Imperi Pass. Well, it was glorious. I think it? it was a fantastic effort. It was like, of the novices, it was, it was the one horse. Like, it's a horse that you could see coming back for a champion hurdle if Constitution Hill wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I definitely think Could he beat him? Ah uh, no, no, not a hope. I don't think any horse will be. I think every horse next year is going to be decided. Is is going to their their targets are going to be decided by where Constitution is going. If he's going chasing, there'll be no other horse staying hurdling. If he's going hurdling, there'll be no other horse going chasing. That's what's what's going to happen, isn't it? Like, I see he's he's nearly favoured for about ten races in Champion. He is, yeah. he's everything: the Champion hurdle, Arkle, Turners, Cold Cup. He's in the betting for favourite to be the next manager, yeah, Chris yeah, Palace. You know, so he's in a lot of races. Um, oh, I'd say that's going to decide everything. That's going to decide like so, like last year, Motors. Lassie mode may as well be retired if, if Constitution stays over all, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? So that's not going to challenge like for a champion. Like is Lassie about any better than Vauban? No, no, not at all, no, no. Vauban had his limitations exposed, I think as said. you said he would. Yeah, well, I, look, I think Vauban ran his, ran his race. And I think Lassie mode like, isn't going to make any impact out in open company if Constitution is, isn't it? I mean, not a hope. You backed in Perry Pass. No, I didn't. Oh, did you not? It. Okay. But, but the guys in the, on the, on the chat in the preview stopped me from opposing it at the same mm. time. Do you know what I mean? I have to say, during the race, at all stages, there was only ever going to be one winner. Yeah. I, I just thought it was incredible how sweetly he travelled through the race. Oh, yeah. No, he was, he was like, if you were on him, there was never, never a danger to right, yeah. Like, the, like Cham Kylie messed around here, me Adam, as they said afterwards. I think they weren't happy with that, were they, the Nicholas? No. Um, and, uh, look... Your man was always travelling. He was always going to win, would he? And uh, he didn't half put away the race too, did he? Like he, he won with some swagger in my eyes. I, I was like hugely impressed. He could be, he could be any kind of a horse. You know what I mean? So he was your performance of the week. He was, yeah, he was. Without, kind are of you regretting it now? No, I, 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 no, I'm not. But I didn't put in your man because everyone knows what he can do anyway. Whereas okay. this horse is a new one to come on the block. Okay. Really. There you go, C- Johnny. Johnny the Nine's kind of performance <laughs> of the week is Impere Pass. So that was Johnny Deneen's performances of the week. Now it's time for his eye catchers of the week. Now this is an important segment. We're trying to find winners from the Chapman Festival. So take it away, Johnny. Did you find three for me? I did, and more. Four. Even. Four? Yeah, he did. Okay. So yeah. why do you have a joint third? Yeah, kind of. Look, I'll make it a okay. joint third. I'll make it quick anyway. So the, <laughs> the joint third, uh, I, I, I'm going to put in Home by the Lee. Um, well, like, that was a shuddering error. Oh, it was. It had no chance after that mistake. And to run as well as it did afterwards, like... It's the one they have to beat in Punchestown, like kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Or Aintree, even. I thought Aintree would be made for him. It, it had a hard race at the same mm. time. I wonder would Aintree come too mm. quick for it? Um, like it's 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 a strong stare at three mile. Aintree might even be a bit in the sharp side for it, even okay. at three mile. But it was in a beautiful position. It was doing everything right, jumping well. You'd be very happy with it. And the next thing, it all but fell. Yeah, it all but fell. And uh, like still wasn't beaten far either. No, it wasn't. It ran a blinder. Mm. It ran a blinder, considering. So I, I'll give him half the third vote. And the yeah. other one I'm going to go over with is Sander Clegan in the Albert Bartlett. Um, Did you see the early part of that race? I was just going to mention that. That, that like Now, he's one of my tips, obviously, yeah, yeah. at 18 to 1. Yeah, Did he yeah. go off 33s or 25s? It was big tw- 28, I think, yeah. yeah. SP, should be probably bigger in the, in, in the machines, yeah. yeah. Um, he ran a cracker. I think he ran a blinder. I think he should have won. So I think Thanks, you should have won. You know, now, see, I almost had a tip, a winning tip. I almost did. Johnny thinks yeah, Sandler Clegane should have won. I think he should have won, and, and he got involved in a bumping match. Yeah, I, I'd advise race. viewers, if you get a chance, It's not. I know he didn't get the rail up the run in, but I would advise viewers to just watch the first half mile of Sander Clegane. It was yeah. extraordinary, yeah. the top bend, yeah. because there was a sandwich of Max, and all of a sudden he's back at last. I'd yeah. say Sean O'Keefe was cursing himself. Yeah, yeah, well, he got into, a, he got into a, a bumping match with... with, 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 with Two other guys, and I, I don't know what they were trying to do anyway, but they were out the wide outside. Like, coming down the hill the first time, he's dead last, yeah. last in that kind of race. And not really travelling either, yeah. But, like, that's not the place you should be anyway. No. And he's mad wide and everything. He's, like, and even up the straight, even up the straight, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought he, that was a very ordinary effort anyway, to be honest. I, I, I think the jockey? That, yes, yeah. yeah. I think that heart should have won. Yeah, won. Like, I, I didn't back it now, but I, I would be sick if I backed that. It's, it's one of those, Paul Nolan only has so many darts to fire. Yeah. And, like... You're coming out of Cheltenham going, I probably have the best horse in the Albert Bartlett. Yeah. And he finished third. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, no, I know it's infuriating, he's, yeah. He's going to be nice horse chasing wise, but so will the winner. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Do you know? So it's no gimme that he's going to make 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 uh, inroads in, as, as a as a three mile chaser next year against because like there's a lot of good horses in that race. There was a lot of good horses in that race. So um I, I thought it 
I think it, I think it that should definitely have won that race. I, yeah. I don't know. So there you go. Joint third, Sander Clegane and home by the Lee. Your second biggest eye catcher to Chatham Festival was? It was Captain Teague in the bumper. Yeah, lovely, lovely, horse. Models, lovely horses, right? Yeah, Lickens, yeah. yeah, smashing looking horse. Um, I mean, I was there wouldn't be a judge of horse, but I see him coming out. He's a fine big horse. He's, he's, a, he's a national hunt chasing horse, isn't he? Like, yeah. He's a national hunt staying horse anyway. And like, he's won. He'd won a point to point in the place down Cork, like knocking hard. Like, geez, you, you'd want to stay there. Now that's an awful track, like for stamina wise. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, like to win a bumper in, in around Plumpton, like he must be. He must have a bit of ability at the same mm. time because he wouldn't be bred for that kind of stuff. Mm. And like he's the first English horse home. Like he was third, and I'd say the next English horse home was 12th in that bumper. Mm. So he beat a lot of Irish horses. That was a good effort. Mm. Very, very good effort. Um, uh, the future's bright for, for Team Ditch Eat, isn't it? Like yeah. they have a lot of nice young horses yeah, coming They probably through. do. And I mean, like, okay, the, the Ballymore are, is going to be a good race, obviously, he's again next year. But he's already a contender for that, in mm. my eyes, anyway. Maybe even the Albert Bard. Like, the horse stays strong, anyway. Like the, the minimum he wants is, is the Ballymore trip and possibly even okay. further. Okay, that's Captain Teague, Johnny Deneen's second biggest eye catcher from the festival. And numero uno, number one. Am I going to get as big a shock as I did with, with your, your performance of the no, week? No, I, I think this is, was obvious. I, I, well, to me, it was obvious. You know, I, I thought Magical Zoe read a blinder oh, in, the, yeah. in the mayor's novice hurdle. Yeah. I think that should have won too. She should have won. Oh, she should have won, yeah. I think she should. Um, like she's all, they're all out. I mean, out of their, you, you can't win races. Coming from, it's hard. extraordinary how far back she was, yeah. wasn't it? But even, I was even watching that race again last night. Like The winner is coming to the last. And it's about four in front, and there's about ten fellas sitting up motionless in behind. I said, like, what? Did what are you waiting for? Yeah, exactly. You're not, you're not trying to close in at all. Like, it was no mug in front either. Do you know what no. I mean? But that, that winner made all the running, but, but more or less, didn't it? Yeah. You, you, you were like, well, yeah. So, uh, what chance did you coming from like fifty lengths behind, mm. and you out in the wide outside, and darting here, there, in and out, left and right, all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> like, if, I, I think that should have won. I, I do. Like there was a moment, a, a bit like Tihupu almost, where. You think Magical Zoe is going one side of the horse in front of her and then darts to the other side and, and it's very hard to win from the middle oh, it of the is, track. Yeah. Like Once you switch into the middle, it's like go, it's like the it's like the um the all weather, like would you would you go for the, the rail? The rail, yeah, oh, you, you're, you're gone. About yeah. It. Most yeah. tracks you're gone. And if you switch into the rail there, you're in trouble. No yeah. one or two horses did win. I mean Oroco won the last race from, mm. from the far side, but generally speaking, your best on the stand side anyway in Chelsea. So Magical Zoe was the best mayor in the mayor's office hurdle? Oh, I think so, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think that's one Adrian Heskin would love to have back again. So, Magical Zoe is Johnny Deneen's eye-catcher of the Cheltenham Festival. So, it's review of the picks time here <laughs> on Up in the Ante. I have to say, I wasn't particularly looking forward to this, but uh, we're going to review our selections for the 2023 Cheltenham Festival and try and find out where it all went so <laughs> drastically wrong. Right. So, uh, Johnny, do you want to kick off? Congratulations, first of all. <laughs> right. Uh, a runaway 1 0 win for Johnny Deneen, thanks to Cora Trambler, 10 to 1 winner. Yeah. It all started so brilliantly for you. Well, that's it. Look, it, as I said, it's, it's, it's not easy to pick him out. And, and Johnny, you don't have to make me feel better, okay? No, it's honestly, okay. You no, can hit me where it hurts. No, honestly, I'm no. big enough and I'm man enough yeah, to take I know. it. Look, so that's it. But look, it, uh, I fluked one and it could have been none. It could easily be none. It could have been two, could have been none, could have been one. Yeah. yeah. So, look, that's it. There's a tin You're lucky with Stumptown. Yeah, it should have been a neck. Like as I said, I'm a neck away from two, and I'm a neck away from none. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's the that's the kind of tin lines you're talking about. Uh, after that, some of my other reference weren't great. Now, to be honest, but it is it isn't easy. It, I think most people watching the show will recognise it as not. And on top of that, like a lot of the horses went off bigger prices in the day than they were for months. Yeah, you know what I mean? Know. Yeah, it's you know? tricky, isn't it? Look, it is, and, and I, you mm. don't know what's going to shorten and what's going to lengthen in the market. The ground is so. I think next year, if you were picking horses. If I was picking them next year, I think I'd put my, all my eggs into the one round basket and take your chances that you hit the right ground. Because if you pick the likes of Banbridge, you ain't getting a run, you know what I mean? If the so, so would you, as in, you might pick all soft ground horses? All good to soft minimum anyway, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And what happens then if, if it's well, you're, quick you're, ground? You're ghost, you're ghost. Right. Yeah, I think I would. I, nearly, I think the chances of Chetlam letting fast ground there is pretty zero yeah. anyway, pretty nil anyway, do you know what I mean? So it's hard to believe two weeks before the festival we were thinking, how quick is it going to be? Yeah, 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 exactly. And then all of a sudden, sudden it will, it, will it be on? You know what I mean? Do you know? And <laughs> it's something you said early on, which was very, which was very true. Raining on the day yeah. is a big factor. Isn't oh, it? Massive, when when yeah. it rains on the day at Cheltenham, yeah. it gets very Oh, it does, it does. Yeah. And the horse is trampling, of course. It's, it's, it's common sense. And it's not it? a gray gra- there's not a great grass cover. But apparently cover. there was no grass cover no, there and all no. d- dirt and dump and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think the, 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 the first, the, the, the old course, 
was more threadbare than the, the new mm. one. I think the new one was probably better ground, all right. But um, I, I think you're never going to see. You're going to be allowed to have good to firm. You're not a, that's not going to happen, is it? Like, I don't think. Tell me this. Was there any horse that won that you regretted not putting up? Was there any horse that you were close to putting up at any stage that, that ended up winning there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about it too much. I, look, you know, I had won. <laughs> oh, I had right. won. Okay. Imper- After Imperi Pass won at, at Punch's Ten, right. or uh, sorry, at Nace, it was a Mickey Mouse race, but I think he was 12 to 1 for the Ballymore at that stage. And he beat nothing. It was a terrible race. Right. The form hasn't even worked out that well. But there was just something about it that day that I said, Do you know what? I might put him up, put him up next week. And then I, I kind of hemmed and hawed and said, So we don't really know where he's going to go. Could he go two miles? Could he go two and a half miles? And, and, he, I was on the verge of tipping him for the Ballymore at that stage, and then I didn't. Right. So, that yeah. was my one that kind yeah, of. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm lucky that they put up Cora <laughs> because I could easily have not put that up. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say one. <laughs> here is uh, my tale of woe for the week. Okay, Sander Clegane, I think, even though he we went off bigger price than day, I thought he was almost the best horse in the Albert Bartlett, as does Johnny. Now, Nico de Boinville, if he's watching, okay. I'll never know what he was trying to do when walking on air. Uh, obviously, he was my banker of the entire Cheltenham Festival. It was a bizarre race to watch. He didn't get into a rhythm early, but I thought he actually travelled from the, the third last to the last, like the best horse in the race. And then you're going, you know, 20 yards from the last hurdle, and he's still on the bridle. And you're saying, come on, get after him, like, come on. So I don't know if he, obviously, he's a horse that maybe you have to kind of nurse into a race, and maybe he didn't want to go after him too early. But... He went for maybe two or three gaps that he didn't get. He ended up being a beaten a couple of lengths into, into fifth. I think at Aintree, under a more positive ride off that sort of mark, he's probably going to be very hard to beat. But that's no good to us now. and Nobody cares, really. So I, I, I thought he was one that probably... He wouldn't have won because the winner won very easily. Good time, Johnny. But I thought he was definitely the second best horse in the race. But, but wasn't, on wasn't the pretemps uh, an incredible race? Uh, um, it was like the Royal Hunt Cup coming to the last, wasn't it? There was horses yeah. everywhere. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I was watching the race with a, with a friend of mine, and he said uh, he was on the winner, right? Good time, Johnny. Good time, Johnny, yeah. And he said, uh, I just thought it was a few quid in good time, Johnny. And next thing he said to me, coming to the last, he said, It's not going to be beat three lengths, good time, Johnny, after being out the back. And I just looked down at him and said, Jeez, it's not going to be beat. It's, it's hosed in. It's in, the, yeah. in the blink of an eye. Yeah. But there was two, 15 horses across the track. It just shows you to me what kind like, okay. What kind of a p- bad price shoot first was all the year in a race as, as competitive as that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe shoot versus mine's better than, but but like it it, it was way more open than, than the anti post betting suggested. Mm. I think anyway. Yeah, because it was Maxim and and shoot first were very short in the lead yeah, up and to the race. Yeah, and Preston None of the yeah. like two of them didn't even run in the finish. But um, geez, it was it, it, the, the pretense to me was was way more open than the seven to two the field mm. race anyway. Do you know what like I, mean? I actually got some value. Like Pembroke at sixteen to one went off ninety two favorite, ran an absolute shocker. Yeah, didn't jump particularly well. Uh, my beloved Might I ran okay in the Martin Pipe, put up a fourteen to one, went off six to one. He, he's just not a winner, Might I, as you said. No. Like he had every chance, got the rail. Yeah. He's just not a winner. I think they need to ride him more positive as well. Me and Might I were done, we're finished. Thanks well, for the memories, the, Might I. The last th- two days, the hurdle track is hard to back the winners of my eyes in here, yeah. in any kind of a race, be yeah. it the stairs hurdle, the handicap hurdles are, are murder races. It's that new whatever the the new course. It's a completely different race course to, to the other one. Completely and it, it, and it yeah. makes it so much more difficult in my And opinion. I think they were almost overcompensating for the long run from the second yeah. last to the last. Yeah. There was too many horses travelling too well that didn't win coming to the last hurdle yeah. on the new course. Yeah, yeah, they were given too much to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there you go. The final score for the 2023 Cheltenham Festival is Johnny Deneen 1, David Jennings 0. And, well done, and don't forget Paul Nichols 2. And Paul Nichols 2, yeah. <laughs> He's so well done, Paul. You won. <laughs> <laughs> you beat the two up in the ante host, but well done, Johnny. Right. You're a one nil yeah. winner. <laughs> that is a review of our selections for the 2023 20, Cheltenham Fest. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So before we finish up another series of up in the ante, the traditional curtain closer is to pick out a horse for the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. Heaven forbid. <laughs> Johnny, if I couldn't find the winner in the weeks leading up to the 2023 20, one, what chance of me finding one for the 2024? Which is, um, do you know, not not last year, the year before, unbelievably. At, at this point in the show, I picked out Statler for the National Hunt Chase. All right. Which was an extraordinary achievement, to be honest. It was. Considering my, uh, my run for the last few years. Okay, so what have you got for us for the 2024 Chatham Festival? I, I, I know you only look for one. I'm going to give you two quick ones. Oh, two for the price yeah. of one. I, I'm going to go John Bond for the Ryanair. Okay. Just the fact that I think the Ryanair this year 
was like they were average horses in it, weren't they? Like mm. like Shishkin ran well, like because he knocked down every fence in the place, and he probably was the best horse. But he, he looks he looks like John Bond looks as though like he was trying to obviously keep tabs and dice art Dynamo. I, w- I thought maybe halfway up the run he'd be beaten 10 lengths. Yeah. He stuck at it, didn't no, he? No, he did. He, he stayed well. John Bond looks to me that two miles is too short from nowadays. Mm. And he's he's, go- he's definitely going to be a step up in trip. El, El Fabiola will stay at two miles, so he's nothing to worry about from from the novices then. And to me, the, the Ryanair is, is open, wide open for a new a new kid in the block to come along. And he, he, he'd be the one I'd be going for anyway at this stage. Okay, so John Bond is Johnny Dean's first selection. Yeah, and the second one is T. Hoopo for the stairs. Mm. Again... I think he should have won the race this year. I think it's it's a division that's that's there's not a lot in it as such. Mm-hmm. And plus the the main thing is, f- you'd be looking at the like the race like the Ballymore and and the Albert Bartlett. They look like staying chasers in the Albert Bartlett. Mm-hmm. So I don't see anything coming out of that. And the Imperial Pass is far too good to run in the stairs hurdle. So like you you'd, you'd accept the likes of Gaelic Warrior going up. Like I wouldn't mind him running the, even if he does. Even if he, even if they do step him up to three miles, I, I think Tiopo would would beat that kind of a horse anyway. Yeah. To me, he's he's a, like if he can stay so he's only six, he's only seven next next season. So I, I think that he's he's I think he's around ten to one. I think he's a good price to be honest. Yeah, to Hooper, Johnny then he thinks he should have won the twenty twenty three stairs hurdle and he might get compensation in twelve months time. I'm gonna go for a horse that didn't run at Cheltenham. I'm gonna go for Ballyburn in the Ballymore. I, I think he's probably Willie Mullins' best bumper horse. And I love the fact that they actually have minded him and they said, right, we're not going to Cheltenham. We're going to keep him for next season. We'll probably see him a punch then, I'd imagine. Ballyburn. Uh, to me, he was the most impressive bumper winner in Ireland this season. Well, apart from a dream to share, he was obviously very good at the Dublin Racing Festival. But Ballyburn, to do what he did at punch his in a bumper that I think was a good bumper, was a fair achievement. And just look back at that point to point. It was a brilliant performance because he was badly hampered at the second last. I think Ballyburn is very good. And I did say, on one of my many Cheltenham preview nights, one with Ruby Walsh, I did say, I think Willie Mullins' best bumper horse is not running at the 2023 Cheltenham Festival and instantly Ruby Walsh said I agree All right. so both myself and Ruby Walsh think Ballyburn might beat Willie Mullins' best bumper horse he's a 16 to 1 shot for next year's Ballymore who knows he could be another Imperial Pass uh, I think he's a very good horse and hopefully next year we will see him over hurdles and he could develop into a Cheltenham Festival contender so Tihupu and John Bond for Johnny Deneen and Ballyburn for me in the Ballymore So this is your final chance to get a discounted offer on the Racing Post Members Club. If you are not a member of our brilliant Members Club in the Racing Post, SAVE NOW is the code, all caps, S-A-V-E-N-O-W. That's the code for 50% off the first three months. Join the Racing Post Members Club, SAVE NOW is the code, 50% off the first three months. So folks, that is it. We have reached the conclusion of another series of Up in the Ante. At the start of the series, we went looking for a man to fill those shoes there. And we managed to find Johnny Deneen. How lucky were we to find (laughs) this man? Johnny, it's been a pleasure sharing the last 20 weeks with you. Have you enjoyed it? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Look, it's it's, it's a step in a completely direction, different direction for me anyway. So no, I did enjoy it. No, I did enjoy it. And, And look, it's... It's, uh, it's only one day a week, so it's no big deal, really. I mean, if you get up w- once a bit earlier than normal, that's all, you know what I mean? But no, I did enjoy it, you know, and you get to meet people and you get to make contacts, and you know, it's very, very, very handy out, out, you know. It was a big benefit to me now, overall, actually. Was yeah. it, yeah? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, Johnny, uh, hopefully come next November, hopefully, uh, you'll... you'll, you'll You'll join us again, will you? Well, we'll, we'll have to see, yeah. We'll, we'll have, have to get into you, negotiations. You, we'll get the new contract out. <laughs> You'll probably be doing the Late Late Show by then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine myself and yourself on the Late Late Show. For people that don't know, the Late Late Show is kind of the Irish equivalent to Graham Norton, is yeah, it? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah, yeah. like that. They're but, missing uh, the man in you. Yeah, little, Ryan Tuberty is stepping down. And Johnny Deneen, I think you're, uh, you might have made it into Paddy Power's betting, I think, for the, uh, for the Late Late Show. I'm not quite sure, but... Uh, yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure sharing the last 20 weeks with him. Fantastic insight from a proper punter who speaks it as it is. That's the one thing I think from meeting people at Cheltenham, the one thing they love, Johnny, is your honesty. When you lose, you tell people you lose. When you win, you're quite modest um, with your winnings as well. So uh, fair play to uh, Johnny Deneen. Look, it's been brilliant. Unfortunately, the tips didn't quite go our way at the 2023 Cheltenham Festival, but we hope you've enjoyed the last 20 weeks. We've certainly enjoyed bringing the show to you every week, and we will be back, hopefully, next November with another series of Up in the Ante. So our thanks to our sponsors, Bet365. A massive thanks to this man, Johnny Deneen. I've been David Jennings, and thanks for watching the entire series of Up in the Ante.